describing this world is based on mathematical equations. Okay? That's why, for example, when people say, well, when we go back to the beginning of the universe, things blow up. Okay? Or we have singularity. You've heard of those things? Okay? Why? Because they are using mathematical equations. Mathematical equations did not exist before. This is the law. It's a law. An equation is a law. This law was imposed or revealed to this universe by God after the universe was created. The law is not eternal. Okay? So what they're basically saying is that if you want to invent the automobile, you have to have the traffic laws before that. You don't do it that way. You invent the automobile, then you impose traffic laws. The invention of the automobile does not depend on the uh, establishment of traffic laws. Traffic laws come because of the invention of the automobile. So the equilibrium was imposed because of the creation. Okay? They were inspired later, not at the very beginning. That's why those equations that they use blows up. Okay? So that's a huge assumption. When you do that, that's the wrong assumption, and it's wrong, that's why it doesn't work. So, balance of equilibrium is the law, and this is very vividly mentioned in chapter 55 in the Quran. In that chapter, it's called Ar Rahman or the All Gracious. And in that chapter, it specifically admonishes the human being. God says that do not violate the balance. This balance that God has created, it's equations that we use all the time to describe the universe, it's based on that balance. Aggression is opposing the balance that God has created. Lying is opposing the, the balance that God has created. It disturbs that balance. And now, God's law is the balance, so he again establishes the balance. When he does that, that's the retribution that you have to pay for your sin, for that transgression that you did. Okay? It's not that God is smiting everybody okay, as soon as something happens. It's the establishment of the balance that we suffer later on because of what we did. Okay, so that's why he says absolutely do not disturb the balance. Okay? So everything is based on mathematical equations. So this is from elementary physics. You have acceleration equal to minus gravity, free fall in vacuum, and then you have velocity displacement. Everything is equal. Okay? They all obey that. Newton's law is G M capital M little m divided by R squared. That's the force that two large bodies exert on one another. The Earth and the Moon, the Sun and the Earth and the planets, they all exert these forces, this force. And just because the Sun is bigger, it doesn't exert more force. It's the equal on both sides. Okay, otherwise, Earth would crash into the Sun. So, concept of antimatter, the same way, everything is based on equations. This one here is plus or minus. The minus sign is a consequence of algebra, and it signifies the sea of negative energy of antimatter that Dirac actually discovered. And everybody else said it's unphysical. He didn't. And now, you see, remember that, that periodic table I showed? If you multiply all the periodic tables by minus one, then you're going to get antimatter. All of them would be antimatter because all those protons would have negative charge. So it would be one negative charge, two negative charge, three negative charge, and so on. Okay. All right, so, so we read these, these verses, okay? And I'm tired, so where is, you are here, okay? So you don't have to carry your microphone today. 2419. <clears throat> when you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheaf, do not go back to get it. Leave it for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, so that the Lord, your God, may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat the olives from your trees, do not go over the branches a second time. Leave what remains for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow. When you harvest the grapes in your vineyard, do not go over the vines again. Leave what remains for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow. Very good. Okay. 
6, 2. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your initiator, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. 2.177 Righteousness is not to turn your faces towards the east or the west. On the contrary, righteous are those who believe in God and the last day, the angels, the scripture, and the prophets, and they give their money in spite of loving it to the relatives, the fatherless, the poor, the refugees, the beggars, and to free the slaves, and they uphold the contact prayer and give the cleansing charity and they are faithful to their promise once they make a promise. And they steadfastly persevere in the face of war and loss and during hardship. These are the truthful ones. And these are the God-fearing ones. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I didn't put any titles on these. And I wanted to see if people know where these come from. Okay, are they from the Quran, from the Old Testament, from the New Testament? Okay, and... Some of you know because you've seen the, these before. For those of you who don't know, the first come from Deuteronomy 24. Okay? That chapter 24, verse 19, 20, and 21. The second one from Matthew 6. Okay, that's what Jesus was telling people. Okay? But look at the similarity between the two. Okay? It's a lot of people don't see this. But similarity between the two is that once you leave that thing out there, for the, for, the, for the fatherless and the alien and the widow to pick it up. You don't know who's picking them up. And the person who picks it up doesn't know who left it there. So it's unknown, a secret thing. In here it tells you that don't, do a, don't use a trumpet to announce that you're giving to charity. This is what you have to do. You have to be so secretive that even your right, right hand does not know what your left hand is doing. So he's saying the same thing. Okay? So... Then, then God will reward you. The last one is from the Quran. Again, the same thing. It tells you the same thing. The relative, the fatherless, the poor, the refugees, the beggars, and to free the slaves. Okay. The same thing. And uphold the contact prayers. And the prayers well. So don't show off. Don't turn your east and west and, and pray that you, you, take, you get honor from men. This is how you do. You give the money that you love okay, to to, uh, to these group of people who are in need. So this is, you see the similarities between this. So let me, let me just conclude here. Okay, so according to the mathematics that I introduced in, this, in these talks, the, <coughs> the Quran and the scripture in general, okay, because now, remember now that, uh, that the stories of the history, historical events that are in the Quran, like the story of Joseph, for example, the story of Jesus, the story of Moses and Pharaoh, they're also in the Old Testament and New Testament. And so what he's telling you that since this is mathematically coded, those are correct. You see? Because you and I were not there when the Red Sea was parted. When Moses, by God's leave, parted the Red Sea, we were not there. But he tells you right here in this Quran that that actually happened, but this time now it's mathematically generated. Which means that we're witnessing right now via mathematics. Okay, that's the important thing. So, uh, and again, I said it existed beyond the dimensions of this physical universe which we live in. So it doesn't depend on this physical universe. It's a, it's a really master tablet. Okay. So Ottoman mathematics took the form of a book called the Quran, nearly fourteen hundred so years ago. It can be therefore concluded that. The Quran is the literal embodiment of the Ottoman mathematics and cannot, it can only be marked by God. So you cannot destroy the Quran. Okay. All right. So then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just write, uh, read this one and then I'll, I'll finish. Okay. So he decreed for you the same religion he has decreed for Noah 
And what we inspire to is the same as what we, we decree to Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. You shall uphold this religion and do not be divided there. Okay. Your call is heavy to bear for those who set up partners for God. These are the people whom God alone is not enough for them. You want to mention another name besides God's name. Okay? And that person is a, is a creation of God. It could be a Jesus, Moses, or Muhammad, or anybody. Okay? That's why. They need a partner for God. It's too much. God chooses for himself whomever he wills. And he is whoever goes according to his laws. And guides to himself those who repent. The repentance comes from humility. People who accept and admit that they made a mistake. Arrogant people cannot do that. They cannot admit that they were wrong. And if you read the Quran very carefully, Satan actually blames God for enticing him. So he blames it on God. So, uh, uh, I'm finished, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.